Good evening. We're going to start the meeting for November the seventh. Call. We'll have call. We'll have the invocation by Commissioner Keller, Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Grogan, and we'll have a roll call. Please stand. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we ask uh, that we be mindful and, and remember those who uh, had the the terrorist attacks in, in both uh, New York and in uh, Texas. We ask a, a blessing. Uh, some comfort there for the families of those who were, who were wounded or who uh, died in those attacks. We ask a blessing on our city, Lord. Uh, keep us all safe and, and, and well. Um, help us as we uh, go through our growing pains here as, as we move forward. Uh, we ask a blessing on all of our staff for the job that they do. A blessing on our first responders, Lord, as they keep us safe, keep them safe. We ask for uh, wisdom for our meeting tonight that we have uh, good decisions for our city. And finally, as always, Lord, we ask a blessing on our military. Wherever they are in the world, keep them safe and bring them home to us. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Grogan? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Present. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Keller? Here. All right, we're going to have uh, presentations and proclamations. First will be the proclamation for Week of the Family, November the 4th through the 11th. And uh, I'll read that off. The city of Oakley is blessed with a multitude of families, an essential part of the culture, social, and spiritual fabric of our community. And whereas the city of Okoy commissioners recognize that strong families are at the center of communities, that children live better lives when their families are strong, and that families are strong when they live in communities that connect them to economic opportunities, social networks, and service. And whereas the theme for this year's Week of the Family is a team effort, just like individual players on the team, family members have their own unique skills, personalities, and positions. And whereas strong families and teams both work together towards a common goal as you cannot play team sports successfully as an individual. We need our families to help us through good times and bad. And whereas just as teams learn from practices and games, families learn as they help each other through life and give opportunities to learn and grow. And whereas during the week of November the 4th through November the 11th, 2017, City of Okoye residents should take the time to honor the importance of families and recommit to enhancing and extending the special connections that support and strengthen them. Now, therefore, the City Commission of the City of Okoye does hereby declare the week of November the 4th through the 11th, 2017 as Week of the Family in Okoye and urge all citizens to share in this many festivities prepared for this occasion. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come it down and give it to you. And this is Victoria Laney. I'll let her explain to you. Thank you so much. Let's get a picture. Anybody want to take a picture? Uh-oh. There's a there camera. Joy always does a, uh, oh, good. Here she is. Thank everyone. Okoy always does what the most beautiful proclamation, I think, of all the cities. Every city in Orange County and the state um, does a proclamation, and Okoy always does a wonderful job with things in the background and um, the wonderful language, and we really appreciate it. And Okoy has always been a wonderful place for families, and we appreciate all the activities that happen every year. 
and the uh, Founders Day was magnificent, and that's on our calendar, and Okoe is um, listed as a sponsor of Week of the Family, and not every city is listed as a sponsor, but Okoe is, and we appreciate, um, you know, Joy Wright works with us, and the, the mayor, you can see the commissioners, and so it's really wonderful. We're having um, a few activities this year that are a little unusual, and every year we do things. There's a film called Screenagers. It's about an hour long, and I've previewed it, and it's about uh, a mother trying to decide whether her daughter should be allowed to have a cell phone or not. And so it's uh, totally free to view, and if you want to see where the dates and times are, uh, you can go on the website, um, www.weekofthefamily.org, and it'll have the locations and time for that. It'll be showing uh, several times until the end of week of the family. So again, thank you to all of you for what you do, everyone here, for making Okoe a wonderful place for families all year long. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next is the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Acting Finance Director Bruinski. Mayor, Commissioners, we recently had received notification from GFOA about this. The Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting has been awarded to the City of Ocoee by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for its comprehensive annual financial report, the CAFR, for fiscal year ending 9-30-16. This is the 28th consecutive year the City has achieved this recognition. The Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by the government and its management. The CAFR was judged by an impartial panel to meet the high standards of the program, which include demonstrating a constructive spirit of full disclosure to clearly communicate its financial story and motivate users and groups to read the CAFR. At this time, I would like to recognize the Finance Department staff here tonight that were instrumental in receiving this recognition for fiscal year ending 9-30-16. I have Joyce Tolbert, Vanessa Anthony, and Shirley Hambly that were put, helped put together the report. And we also have Donna Bruno here Stand who up. has Can taken over. <laughs> Did they plaque. give you the plaque already? We have a plaque and we have a certificate. You all want to come up and get your picture made? Sure. All right, come on up front. Uh, I think all of us could go up. Okay. All the commissioners and Larry. Next will be the uh, Silver Star Road Downtown Corridor Study. Nick Lepp with Metro Plan Orlando. Mayor, for a quick introduction, I'm Mike Rumors. Mike Rumor, I'm sorry. That's you wasn't on the. You had a downtown master plan update at the last meeting, and we're seeing some of the fruits of the labor with the road work going on, um, all the meetings we're having with the different projects. The, the downtown master plan has done a lot of things with regards to projects. It's creating excitement out in the community. If you recall, one of the main uh, roadway thoroughfares on our downtown master plan was the Silver Star Road. Mm -hmm. 
and the alignment, where is that going to happen? Is there going to be a roundabout? Is there not? And that, that road project was on a metro plan, which is our regional transportation planning authority list, to be funded for a study in the future. Well, metro plan has received some funding from the Federal Highway Administration, and they are announcing and going to provide a corridor study for the city of Ocoee, primarily the Silver Star Road in our downtown area. And I have Nick Lepp, the manager of long range planning. You may recognize Nick. He was a consultant for the city some years back. And he will go further on this study. It's kickoff kind of the time frame, and introduce this to you. This will help us determine early on uh, a really good close indication of where how Silver Star Road will be aligned and to allow DOT to really pinpoint their future studies. So with, with that, I'll introduce Nick. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for having me out. I'm actually really excited to start this project. Uh, it's been something that I've recognized for many years working here in the city and actually living in the area. Um, some of the project objectives, uh, we're really trying to enhance the connectivity and accessibility of the area, really um, finishing up and, and or going with that downtown master plan that you have. How do we incorporate a corridor study or a state road study into a livable document, vision document that you have? Uh, we're also looking to create enhanced biking and walking opportunities. With this, we're going to look for opportunities to extend the West Orange Trail and connect it into the downtown area. Um, also identify uh, steps for improved trans uh, transit within the area. How do we accommodate that with maybe some infrastructure improvements that would go along Silverstock? Uh, and then also supporting the downtown master plan, like I said, which will also enhance the economic viability of the area. Uh, like Mike said, this is part of the long range transportation plan, which really established a need for something to be done with Silver Star. Uh, what that need is hasn't been determined yet. That's what the study will help us starting to identify. Do we need to continue on that widening four lane PD&E path? Is it a complete street study that could be accommodating the traffic that we're projecting there while still providing that uh, connection to the downtown and supporting the downtown master plan? Um, which is that nuance that we're adding to this study which wasn't there previously under the long range transportation plan or the project priority list. At that time, it was only looked at as a four lane widening. So now we have an opportunity to really take a look at it before we go into the PD&E or that DOT study that will look at the details for the alignment. Uh, our study schedule is gonna be about an 18 month process. Uh, we've kind of already started right now with the kickoff. Um, it'll take us through the first task, which we uh, define the problem and then we'll start looking at uh, selecting and defining those alternatives and then coming up with a corridor implementation action plan will be the third step. Some of the brief scope items that we're including in here. Uh, so we're starting this off a little different than most quarter studies. We're not jumping into existing conditions. We recognize that there are some possible alignments and alternatives that came out of the downtown master plan. We want to evaluate those quickly and identify any fatal flaws that we might see with those alignments. So that way we can narrow down our focus for the complete street study going into the existing conditions and strategically collect data that will help support the study, not just to collect data for collecting data sake. Um, so within that, uh, we'll also look at the concept development and complete streets. So going into the PD&E, there could be some low hanging fruit, short term projects that could be done, go right into design, while that longer process of the PD&E, the right of way acquisition or the widening would uh, go on. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. So let me summarize in a nutshell. The, the project's on a list to be funded. So once the project re received a, a low, uh, a higher ranking and was funded, then it would go into a two year PD&E study for the Silver Star Corridor. So what this study is doing is saying, okay, let's determine the issues out there. Where is that realignment gonna happen east or west of Ocoee Popka Road? That's a big question. Does the road need to be four laned or two laned? And under a complete street concept, can it be four laned or two laned? And then that will allow this study to be the given to DOT and then they can move forward on a revised PD&E. It won't be that long process. So we're really looking forward to it. We will be bringing back to you some alternatives based off what they call fatal flaw analysis, depending on where it is on which side of Ocoee Popka Road and what the conditions look like. So we'll be bringing this back to you sometime. Any questions? All right, anybody on the 
Do have any questions? No. no. It's exciting. Yeah. Glad to finally see that beginning to come about. It's going to be a fun project. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to go to uh, comments from citizens. If it's comments, and I got I got some uh, speaker forms up here, and it's not on the agenda. We can do it now. So I'm going to start with the names, and if it has anything to do with the agenda that's on our uh, meeting tonight, then we'll put it off to that. All right, Dr. Kathleen Crown. We we that timers. We run the timer. It'll be three minutes. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having us come. I'm Dr. Kathleen Crown. I'm the chairperson for the Human Relations Diversity Board Committee for the City of Ocoee. And we've been working very diligently lately with the Equal Justice Initiative to get wording for a lynching marker. And we've determined that we've got what we think is outstanding script. Now, Joy has told me that she's given you a copy of it. And I'll read it for everyone. And we can stop if anyone has any questions about it. The title is Ocoee Election Day Massacre, November 2nd, 1920. In 1920, black residents of the Ocoee area owned land and businesses and were eager to vote. Despite a terrorizing Ku Klux Klan march through the Orlando streets on October 30, 1920, most Norman and other African Americans attempted to vote. They were turned away. After seeking advice from Orlando Judge John Cheney, Norman again attempted to vote. Armed whites stationed at the polls immediately assaulted him. Reportedly, he fled to the home of his friend and business comrade, July Perry. A mob seeking to capture Perry and Norman surrounded and attacked Perry's home. Perry suffered a severe wound during the raid and was arrested and jailed. The next morning, November 3, 1920, a lynch mob took Perry from his cell, beat him severely, and hanged him at the entrance of the Orlando Country Club. His lifeless body was shot repeatedly. Mobs of white men from surrounding cities traveled to the northern quarters of Ocoee to join local white citizens in torching homes and businesses of black residents. For two days, the mob burned 25 black homes, two black churches, and a Masonic lodge. Reports of black residents killed in the violence ranged from six to over 30 casualties. Survivors fled, never to return. The black community of Ocoee was forced out. Decades later, people of all races in Ocoee come together to acknowledge this hateful history in hope of a better future. All right. That, that, your, that all you got? Any more to talk? Nope, yeah. because the, the side two is the Orange County side. It doesn't really have anything to do with the city of Ocoee. It doesn't mention us at all. Um, all right. Um, do you have any more to comment? Anybody up here? No comments? I didn't get that copy of that letter yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. Would you like one? Well, yes, ma'am. I just have a question or a comment. All right. <clears throat> um, and I did get this and I read it. Um, I just have a question regarding, um, I guess, what are you looking for us just to take this over now and look at, list, read it and review it? and? Well, we'd like for to further dialogue forward, later so we can go forward with uh, the Equal Justice Initiative so that this way they can start on the creation of the markers. I just don't know. I, I'm just wondering, have you, have you approached Rob or city manager or anyone regarding going over it also? Just, again, just there's going to be a marker that's going to be right. in a co-way that we'd and like Mr. to have Butler's been everyone agree to. Well, in the research phase of it with us. Okay. All right. Well, I still got a problem with six from uh, Six to thirty. There's no such records of that. Well, there that's are three. No, you've got to show me the records, and then we'll discuss it. We. But that's this won't be able. To, I would not vote for that long as when it's got six to thirty. It might have been thirty in Orange County. No, well, actually, it depended upon which newspaper article you read. The Associated Press has all said six victims from late voting. That's never been proved. We've got the newspaper well, copies. We'll have, to, we'll have to put it out there to be proved before we can do that. So does anybody else up here have any comments? No more comments. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Bruce Gordy. Mr. Gordy. 
Mayor, I think Mr. Gordy. Is it on, I think is it Dr. On Gordy. Agenda? Yeah, he wants right. number 19. Okay. Thank you. That's why I said we'll talk about it when it gets there. Ray Boudreau. Uh, start the clock until I get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay. Hi, I'm Ray Boudreau. I live at 1308 Olympic Park Circle in Okoye, and I've lived there for 26 years. I am 97 years old now, and I've served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And Vietnam is a question I'm going to bring up tonight. On the ad valorem, non ad valorem taxes, well, let me give you a little bit of history first. I have received 100% disability from the Agent Orange out of Vietnam. I think you all know this, but this is uh, the fact. I have been relieved of all taxes from federal income taxes, and I've gone to this Orange County, and they are in process of relieving me of all taxes on their ad valorem taxes. Now we come to the non ad valorem taxes for which you have presented as an ordinance. If, I, if I'm co incorrect, correct me as I go, okay? I have made a study of this, and I see that the, I know that you cannot relieve me of taxes for the garbage collecting. I understand that. But the other two, I am requesting that you uh, relieve me of those assessment because I am, do not have to pay income tax for the federal government, and the county is being relieved me. I don't have, don't have the proof yet but they're being relieved me of all the excess. So I'm asking the city now to relieve me of the uh, stormwater portion and the fire portion of your ordinance. Now, I understand you have to do this by an uh, addendum, possibly, <coughs> and I'm asking for you to do that now for me. Uh, let's, uh, city manager. Yes, sir. Um, I did speak with Mr. Bujo yesterday. How are you doing, Mr. Bujo? Um, the, the, he understands the issue and what he was asking because of his um, disability in the, um, the Agent Orange situation was he's relieved from his uh, real estate taxes. Um, however, he still has to pay stormwater and garbage, all the non ad valorem taxes, and I, I explained to him um, that was um, enacted by ordinance of the city commission. So what you would need to do if you wanted to provide exemptions for any particular class of residents, um, you would probably want to take another look at um, how those are assessed and um, factor that into what the assessment is each year. I think when we, for each of those, when we did garbage and stormwater and fire fee, um, there was never any talk of exempting certain groups of residents. So that's what the rates reflect. So if that's something that you all wanted to do, we would probably have to take another look at that and bring it back for um, discussion with the city commission as to what those rates would be if you were to exempt certain classes from paying the non ad valorem portions of their real estate bills. I, I request this not only for myself, but all that are 100% disability who live in a coin. Well, anybody up on the any discussion from the commissioners? I'll be happy to say something. Um, my thought would be, Ms. Mr. Boudreau, is that if that's the case, we have to come back and look at the percentage of residents in Ocoee who would fit into that criteria, how it would affect all residents, because um, right now I think, so, except for the stormwater and trash pickup, um, the fire fee is determined by the amount of residents in the city. I and I think it would take some, I personally feel it would take some evaluation, and I know that I couldn't give you an answer right now because I, again, would want to discuss with finance and some other areas before I, before I could give you an answer. I know we've talked, and, um, but I think it's, I appreciate you coming forward. I just think I, need, I would need some time to review it. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, what I would say is I think what we need to do is have a <coughs> staff look into what we have to do to even proceed to that. I know years ago we used to do water for the over, over uh, I think it was 65, yeah. and we had some had to do some studies on that before we did that, and then it finally went away. But I, I know there's a lot of veterans. I'm one, and I'm also got a, a disability. But uh, I think what we have to do is look at that, 
and let staff come up with what would be the answer we could come to because some of the things we do some of the things are just like the fire fee goes towards the fire department and that's some of the things we have you know it's not an avalorum issue so i think rob can maybe see get with i don't know who do you deal that with the finance department or yeah the um, city maybe put it on the city uh, law day I mean, we could bring it back for discussion. There are certain issues, Mayor, like when we um, determine what the fire fee was going to be. Um, you've pledged that as part of, uh, you know, based on 100% of the residents paying that, and you've pledged that as part of the, um, the bond debt service for the future. So um, there's some other issues that you also have to take into consideration if you now want to go back and exempt certain residents. So it's a little more difficult than just saying, you know, how many would it be and how many dollars is it? Yeah. But we could take a look at that if you wanted us to bring it back at some point in the future. All right. Anybody else? So I think that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll he'll go through the process, and then we can bring it up and have a discussion. Would you notify them when we bring it back, Mr. Yes, Joe? Okay. Uh, one other thing. I want to thank you, Mayor, for the tribute that you made Saturday night to the people for all veterans. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm one of them, too. Thank you, sir. Bless you. Thanks for your service. Anybody that served in World War II is still kicking? Take my, well, I don't have a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the time to come out and put up with us. I appreciate it very much. All right, next is uh, Chris Atkins. You guys think it's on the agenda or just general comments? Just agenda. Come on up. It's on the agenda or not? On the agenda. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I think we're good to go then. All right. Anybody else in the in the uh, audience have any comments? Not on the agenda. All right. We'll move to the uh, comments from no staff reports. Uh, nothing this evening, Mayor. All right, commissioners. Commissioner uh, Kelly. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> excuse me, just one uh, note at this point. The Florida Central Railroad will be closing Clark Road at AD Mims Road on Tuesday, November 14th to replace the railroad crossing. Uh, the road is going to be closed for uh, one week with a detour on Hackney Prairie Road, um, Popkov Island Road, and AD Mims Road. A map showing the detour will be posted on the city <coughs> website. Um, I know there's flashing signs out there already. Um, just as a reminder that this is coming, but please just be uh, aware that um, starting the 14th, that uh, that road will be closed for approximately a, approximately a week there while they uh, make all those changes there. New crossings uh, should be made out of concrete panels uh, for a little bit smoother and a longer lasting surface. So if any questions, please contact the Public Works Department, but uh, that's all I've got for now, Mayor. Commissioner First. The 2017 Okoe Christmas Parade will be held December 2nd at 10 a.m. The rain date will be December 3rd, the next day at 10 a.m. And the most valuable partnership grant has now opened. The deadline to submit applications is November 30th. There's $12,000 available, and it's for HOAs mainly. And the grants are worth up to $2,000 a piece. This is for beautification projects in the home owners associations, public safety issues, recreation, and so forth. You can find out more information for both of these and more on the OCOE website, www.ocoe.org. Okay. All right. Commissioner Wilson. I'll wait to the end. Thank you. Commissioner Grogan. Uh, just a quick thank you to the uh, Parks and Rec Department. They have installed the new uh, children's equipment down on Peach Lake Park on Russell and soon to go in and replace new stuff at Big Nettie. And once they're done, we'll have a, um, an opening there for, for the new equipment. And uh, I'd like to thank them for that. I got nothing else. All right. Publics invited to attend the City of Oak Oakoy's Veteran Day Ceremony on Friday, November the 10th, 2017, at 11 a.m., Bill Priest Park. The Veterans Day Ceremony will include Oakoy resident Norm Weller as its keynote speaker, music, and flag presentations. Refreshments will be served after the ceremony. 
In observance of Thanksgiving Day, City Hall would be closed on Thursday, November the 23rd and Friday, November the 24th. No trash collection is scheduled for those days. The public is invited to attend both the Oakway Annual Christmas Parade and Tree Lighting event on Saturday, December the 2nd. As I said, the parade will be 10 and the tree lighting event will be in front of the historical Withers McGuire House from 5 to 8.30 p.m. All right, we're, we're gonna discuss the uh, d November the 21st City Commission meeting a little later, so I'll, we'll bring that up then. All right, consent agenda. Mayor, you have on, on the consent oh. agenda the 21st, uh, the cancellation of the 21st All right. meeting. Does anybody, so just leave it on there, we don't have any um, problems with that? All right, make somebody give me a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Keller, seconded by Commissioner Grogan. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Because let's move on down here. Okay, thank you. Ooh, 40. All right, first reading of ordinance. First reading of ordinance amending the City of Okoye Memorial Police Officers and Firefighters Retirement Trust Fund, amended section 30, supplemental benefit component for special benefits. Police Chief Brown, did I skip somebody? No, I'll go ahead and read the title. This is just first reading, so I'll read the title and we can announce when the second reading is. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida relating to the City of Ocoee Municipal Police Officers and Firefighters Retirement Trust Fund, amending ordinance number 2010-019 as subsequently amended Amending Section 30, <coughs> Supplemental Benefit Component for Special Benefits, Chapter 175 and 185 Share Accounts, Providing for Severability of Provisions, Repealing All Ordinances in Conflict Herewith, and Providing an Effective Date. Uh, no. All right. This is the first reading of this. We'll have the second reading and the public hearing date scheduled for December the 5th, 2017. If you have any comments, you can make them at that meeting. First reading of ordinance for GMMG LLC, 1737 North Lakewood Avenue, annexation initial zoning project. Um, read that. Yep. This is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.64 acres located on the east side of North Lakewood Avenue, 575, 575 feet south of Fuller's Cross Road, and 1,555 feet north of Worst Road. Pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement. Providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the, um, the rezoning ordinance, I don't have. Yes. Okay. This is the rezoning ordinance. An ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1 low density residential to Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.64 acres located on the east side of North Lakewood Avenue, 575 feet south of Fuller's Cross Road, and 1,555 feet north of Worst Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, this will be the same thing. It'll be a second reading in public hearing scheduled for December the 5th, 2017. All right, first reading of ordinance for Sullins, 1928 Adair Street Annexation Initial Zoning. 
Okay, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0 .50 acres located on the west side of Adair Street and across from Marlene Drive. Pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding said zoning at finding said annexation to be consistent with the ACOE Comprehensive Plan, the ACOE City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. Same thing, December the 5th, public hearing. And we have, have a rezoning ordinance on yeah. that one also. 17? This is 7. Sorry, my computer went through a critical update at the wrong time. <laughs> I'm doing That's it the annexation rezoning. I have it if you need it, Scott. We got it right here. Is that it? Yep. Oh, crap. Oh. oh okay, well, you couldn't do any more than I could. <laughs> Scott, do you need it? I have it. I love it. technology. Oh, it really works. Mike, you got the paper? Yeah, you might want to go to that one now that we're... All right, thank you. <laughs> this is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, low-density residential, to Ocoee R1, single-family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.5 acres located on the west side of Adair Street and across the street from Marlene Drive, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, that will be the same uh, process. We'll be discussing that on the public hearing for in, uh, December the 5th, 2017. All right. Let's go to item H, first reading of ordinance and public hearing, and amending the land development code, LDC, relate to Article 2, definitions, Article 5, Section 5A, prohibited uses in Table 5.1, permitted use regulations in overlay districts. City plan rumor. Ms. Mayor, I'll do a more formal presentation at the second reading public hearing. Uh, this first reading is a public hearing because we are looking at limiting or prohibiting some of the uses allowed in the commercial zone with regards to self-storage facilities, tire changing facilities, fast food, restaurants with drive through So because we're tweaking those uses, it is a public hearing. All right. And Scott needs to read the ordinance. Yeah, let me, uh, okay. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending the City of Ocoee Land Development Code, Chapter 180 of the City Code. Amending Article 2, Section 2-4, redefining term mini warehouse and creating a definition for the term self-storage facility. Amending Article 5, Table 5-1, to include limitations on specific uses in special overlay districts, providing for codification, providing for conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, I'm going to open up the public hearing on this one. Anybody in the public have any comments? Pertaining to item 18, first reading of ordinance in public here in amending the land development code. No, no uh, questions or anything. So we'll take it back to the dice. Anybody else have any comments? If not, we can put it off. We'll put it off to December the 5th for the reading, the second reading in public hearing. Thank you very much. All right, item number 19, public hearing of Oakway Business Park preliminary large-scale site plan, project number LS-2017-09, city plan rumor. Okay, this is a... Mike Rumor, city planner. <clears throat> this is a preliminary large-scale site plan in the Ocoee Business Park, Project LS 2017-009. The site is located 
on the west side of McGuire Road, south of Franklin Street, highlighted in this location map. <coughs> the applicant, McCreaney, is proposing to develop 44, just over 44 acres of land as light industrial flex office development consisting of three buildings totaling 646,000 square feet. The property previously received a preliminary subdivision plan in the early 2000s where we created 10 or more industrial lots. Uh, the, the development included the current buildings, this track, and this stormwater pond. As you can see, the preliminary subdivision plan, two lots developed with buildings, a third lot is prepared, and then the master stormwater pond for the development. The applicant is proposing to combine all of those formerly created lots into one development consisting of three buildings of 646,000 square feet. The land use is light industrial and the zoning is I-1. And the attached preliminary site plan, now the next step after this process is a final site plan where we receive the civil engineering plans where they can uh, construct those, construct off the plans. This is preliminary approval. Building 100 in the light industrial flex office park is a 96,000 square foot rear loaded warehouse building with truck bays facing the railroad track to the north. Building 200 is a 406,000 square foot building with truck access on both sides. The third building, 300, is 144,000 square feet with truck access facing the Sunbelt rental. Now the property is accessed from McGuire Road. There's an existing public road that was built with the first, the development of the first three lots. They will have the full access point at this location with turn lanes. There is a northern entrance that has left and, turn, left and right turn lanes proposed with this entrance. And then there's a rear exit only to the north. So there's three access points on McGuire Road. The property is adjacent to the 429. Uh, with the three buildings in the square footage, the FAR floor area ratio of the buildings to the site is less than one. It's a 0.33. Going back to the location of the site, the site is located within the business character area of the State Road 429 overlay. The, the property faces the 429 on the west side. We have the Sunbelt rental site on the south side. The project frontage along 429 is really along an exit ramp going to Plant Street. The applicant has provided an elevation showing this is the exit ramp of the 429, the main thoroughfare to the west of that, showing the building's position. The applicant is present, will give a presentation and describe more of their business and how they, they architecture their buildings. The site has gone through a transportation review and the only items that came out of that traffic impact analysis were the northern entrance requiring a right and left turn lane. The Planning Zoning Commission reviewed this project, the last planning zoning meeting. I put some comments in your staff report. They had questions about traffic, uh, number of trips, kind of how the trips are going to work, and just wanted to make a motion saying they, they approve of the development, they just don't know how to uh, really <coughs> verbalize a way to say they have concerns about traffic, other than to say they have concerns about traffic. I did include that in your staff report. The site will be serviced by Ocoee Water and Sewer. This is a very similar site to the park at 429 that's under construction right now. Uh, that site has five or six buildings and this one has three. So with that, I'll entertain any questions. All right, I'm on open it up to you. I'm going to open it up to the public. I do have one gentleman who filled out a form here. So Mr. Bruce Gordy. Yeah. And the, the developer is here to give a presentation okay. as well. All right. I don't have one for Mr. 
the other gentleman. Should I set Dr. Gordy? Uh, my name is Bruce Gordy, 1209 Country Lane, Orlando, Florida, 32804. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address you. What I would like to do is, owner of the land, uh, to address a little history of the Brown and Phil Peters family that owned this land. Phil C. Peters, as you might know, has a road named after him here in Orange County. He was a great uh, pioneer in the orange growth business. He planted this orange grove over 100 years ago. What well, was an orange grove over 100 years ago. And he maintained it. And then uh, his son-in-law, the Browns, Jerry Brown, then maintained it and kept it as an orange grove for a number of years up till uh, the freeze took it out. So we are very pleased that uh, we have a developer that we're comfortable with in McCraney. We've seen his work. You're going to be very pleased with what he's going to do. I have in my hand a letter from 1967 that conveyed the McGuire Road land to Orange County. So my father-in-law, Jerry Brown, also a pioneer in the citrus business, gave the land that is now McGuire Road extension that goes in front of Okoy Business Park. There were 12 stipulations in 1967 for the county in order to give the land to the county. I have a letter from 1971. And, oh, in the stipulations, one of them was if these 12 stipulations were not fulfilled in three years, the land would convert back to the Brown family. I have a letter from 1971 addressed to the Orange County. It's four years later, where very few of the conditions and stipulations had been met in 71. So I'm not sure if the land hasn't converted back to the Brown family. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's, it's definitely done. But, but there, they, the, uh, the point was that my family or my wife's family homesteaded in Winter Garden, Orange County. This land has been in the family for over 100 years. Uh, we've been the caretakers of it. Uh, our hopefully, uh, with what will be remaining by our, our next generation, which will be the fourth generation, and maybe even the fifth generation, will at some point be part of it. And I just want to thank you for uh, uh, Craig and uh, Mike for working with us. It's been a hard road. It's been a long road. And it's been seven, about 17 years since we did the first plans on this, uh, on this part. We're excited about it. We thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, staff, for what you've done working with us. And I think you're going to be real proud of this project. Thank you very much. This is the developer one. Yes, uh, Sean Carpenter, 14638 Riviera Point Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32828. Stephen McCraney, 1100 North New York, Winter Park, Florida. Yeah, any comments or is that just risk? No, All right. happy to uh, first, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for, uh, for taking a look at the project and all of you. Thank you for uh, meeting with us. We made a great effort to, to meet with everyone personally and explain the project. Um, I'll just take you just real quickly. We are the most active industrial developer in this market. Um, like most of you, I'm a self-started guy uh, who started 27 years ago and, and uh, grew a business. We're proud to be part of COE and really proud of this project. Industrial today is, is uh, changing very, very rapidly. Today industrial is, I mean, we, we look at it as that, is indust that uh, industrial is the new retail with e-commerce and, and uh, the market's changing so vastly. The dynamics of the users that are coming into these spaces are not what you would think of perhaps 10, even 20 years ago. Uh, today, it's, uh, you know, it is, it is uh, a lot of retailers that are moving products uh, 
and, and the market has just changed. But I wanted to just show you, you know, this is a, a project that is very much like um, a project we did on John Young Parkway. And uh, this would be the same look that you would see. This project won uh, uh, project of the year in Central Florida two years in a row, once for Dave Paper and, and another one for our, uh, our uh, uh, Federal Express. But, uh, you know, we've taken a lot of care and a lot of time working uh, with our professionals to provide an atmosphere that's very welcoming and that provides a really substantial look coming off the, uh, the 429. The, the truth of the matter is it's, it's hardly seen from the 20, 429 because of the uh, height of the roadway and the, uh, and the toll plaza that's there. Um, frankly, uh, you know, I always hope it gets seen a little bit more, but uh, Dr. Gordy has worked with us very closely. Uh, we're proud of the project. It'll, it'll be uh, built with three different buildings. We've got terrific access, uh, uh, some very nice elevations that uh, probably are more akin to look like a, a retail project than an industrial project. And um, this is an example real quick. This is a 500,000 square foot building we built facing the Florida Turnpike. We put Freeman Expositions in this building. Um, but you'll see the character of our product and uh, I, I don't want to go on too long, but happy to field any questions that you may have. Uh, Sean Carpenter's our, our head of development here in Central Florida and, and worked so close, has worked so closely with uh, 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 Mike Rumor and uh, Mr. Shadrick. Uh, and uh, it, through the process, so we're happy to field any questions you may have. Right. Anybody, anybody, anybody else in the public? Let's, first of all, anybody up here want any comments? I'll close it, put it back. Anybody else in the public have any comments on that project? If not, I'm going to close the public here and bring it back up to the dais. Anybody up here have any comments? No, I think I've had my questions. I, I will say that after I talked to the gentleman, I was I was running over to Harlan and I went off the turnpike there and. I looked at the buildings and I also seen the three marks that he told me about that you put on there for your children. I so, have three daughters. That's, uh, yeah, they go that's what he told me. Project. I look for it and I seen it, yeah. So it, you can see it on the buildings. All right, we appreciate it. We're, we're looking forward to more uh, economic development in, in town where we can have uh, lower taxes for some people that help, help, help all of us so, and jobs for people. So we appreciate it very much. All right. I need, a, I need a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to approve the Okoe Business Park Preliminary Large, sky, uh, large Scale Site Plan. Do we hear a second? Second. Motion made by Commissioner Firstner, seconded by Commissioner Keller. <laughs> any more comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Sir. Godspeed. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a five minute break. Five minute break. All right, we're going to reopen the meeting. Start back on item 20, second reading of ordinance and public hearing, amending chapter 180, section 580 of the city code related to prohib prohibition of medical marijuana treatment center dispensary facilities within the city of Okoye. I'll give a brief presentation, then the city attorney can read the ordinance. Again, Mike Rumor, city planner. This is a second reading of an ordin ordinance. We're amending our land development code to provide the prohibitation of medical marijuana treatment dispensing facilities. If you recall under the constitutional amendment that permitted medical marijuana, uh, there was a, a period where they do rulemaking and then they, this last session, the, the Florida legislature uh, said it made some Florida law on how you handle and permit medical marijuana dispensaries. Shortly after the constitutional amendment passed, the uh, sort of lobbyists for the cities, counties, and, and the medical marijuana facilities put together a model ordinance that provided for the uh, permitting of these facilities based on population, and then you, they had in this ordinance where you could also provide some other regulations. Uh, and, and then during this last session, the Florida legislature said, no, you either permit them and they fit in the category, uh, they're under Florida law as a pharmacy. So everywhere you allow pharmacies, you can't provide any prohibitations on these uses. You either prohibit it or you allow them. And so a lot of places that adopted that model ordinance have gone back and prohibited uh, past ordinances prohibiting them. And that's the ordinance I'm bringing before you today to say we either have to allow them 
with only one regulation, they can't be within 500 feet of a school, or we prohibit them. And uh, you know, the legislature's taken away home rule on that. Um, so the, again, the ordinance before you is an all out prohibited. So in our land development code, it will say medical marijuana dispensing facilities are prohibited. So there's no question until such time as the legislature takes it back up and maybe uh, provides some leeway, we can bring this back up. With that, I'll entertain any questions. All right, we're gonna let um, Laurie read, City Laurie okay. read the uh, title. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending the City of Ocoee Land Development Code, Chapter 180 of the City Code, <coughs> amending subsection B of Section 5-8 Use Regulations, prohibiting medical marijuana treatment center dispensary facilities within the boundaries of the city, as authorized by Section 381.986 Florida Statutes, providing for codification, providing for moratorium contingency, providing for conflict repealing ordinance 2017-004, moratorium on medical cannabis activities, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, going to open the public hearing for this issue. Anybody in the, in the audience have any comments pertaining to the second reading of ordinance in public hearing chapter 180 for the uh, code related to prohibition of marijuana, medical marijuana treatment center dispensaries? Mr. Atkins. Yes, sir. Nice to see you, Good Mayor. to see you. Chris um, Atkins. Six Mr. Years. Atkins is chief umpire. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> Get back to your community. It's important. Yeah, everyone's got a little bit of time, and that's no lie. It's no lie. Um, so uh, first, I want to take a second to say thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, I try not to um, overbear uh, the commission or the mayor or um, the public um, coming uh, too often, uh, but there's sometimes I feel uh, that maybe just some um, um, factual statistics may help with uh, the decisions that we make, okay? Um, so in reference to this, I'd like to make mention that recently, um, you know, the United States government has um, declared a state of emergency on the opioid epidemic in the United States of America. Uh, these are the same facilities that we are up for discussion here um, to outlaw uh, cannabis, uh, dispense uh, opioids that are destroying the children. So. Um, uh, I'm not um, stating a, a positive or a negative, I'm just stating what the, what the facts are. Uh, one other fact, in 2016, 73% of all Americans, regardless of your party affiliation, um, uh, felt that medical marijuana, medical cannabis, um, was acceptable in our society to treat um, certain illnesses. Uh, people struggle with cancer, um, children struggle um, with seizures, and um, the facts have shown that this is a possible remedy. So I just, you know, would like you to keep that in mind as you go forward to make your decisions. Um, and, uh, and I support anything you guys do. I, I appreciate you all very much, actually. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, on record. I think that it's a potential that cannabis may be utilized to combat the opioid issue. And, um, and I'd hate to uh, turn people away that are already struggling with things, okay? So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. All right, anybody else have any comments? No more, no more comments, we'll bring it back to the podium. Mr. Grogan. Uh, the, the biggest problem I have is the uh, state legislature taking away our home rule. Home rule. Uh, I, I feel personally that without that, and we can't regulate it at all, uh, I'm definitely not in favor of the way it stands. However, my understanding is in the future, uh, we, we all obviously we can come back to this and do what we need to do, but uh, un until the, the uh, state legislature allows us to do our regulations within our own city, um, I'm definitely not in favor of as it stands and would be against it. Anybody else? State legislatures tied our hands. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah really I believe uh, it's taken our home rule away from us. Right. Yeah. All right, I uh, need a, a motion and a uh, second. Well, I'll make the motion to uh, not accept, to put it on. Uh, how, Just prove uh, the ordinance. Prove the ordinance. Yes. Prove Just the prove ordinance. the ordinance. Yeah, the, exactly what the ordinance is written in here on the, um, 
to prohibit the medical marijuana treatment centers, dispensaries, facilities within the city of Ocoee. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner Grogan, seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? No more comments, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. I hope yes was the right answer. All right. <laughs> regular, regular agenda. No items, staff action, any more? Nothing this evening. All right. Comments from commissioners, Commissioner Grogan. Uh, just thank everybody in the whole city for another great uh, Founders Day. Uh, I don't think without question we probably had more residents and more um, people show up at this one than I've ever been at. Um, it was just great, thanks to all of the people that helped the city, all the departments, and that was, there were a lot of people that put this on and a lot of people that cleaned up afterwards. Uh, and thank you, thank the mayor and the, the rest of the commission for doing this. And uh, look forward to the 25th anniversary next year. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Wilson. Yes, again, Founders Day was wonderful, thank you. Just to remind everyone that the police department will be doing their, are starting their collection toys for the Toys for Tots program, Toys for Children, excuse me, program. So as we go into the holidays coming up, Thanksgiving and after there's plenty of sales, please remember toys. Um, and there's gonna be various collection places around town to collect those. Also, I know December 2nd is the parade. Melanie, could you please look back for me and maybe send us an email? Since we're all gonna be on that, the caboose or the float or whatever, that I think we had said how many, <coughs> what, 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 are you, what, what do we call it? The, the train, a sled, excuse sleigh. me. A sleigh, the excuse Santa me. Sleigh. The Santa sleigh. That um, it's Christmas. What was the? I forget what the caboose was for or whatever. It's been changed many times. But the sleigh. Um, I think we said how many visitors we could bring with us. If you could just send an email to remind how many, so that we're not too crowded in there. But again, it's um, please remember the toys for children. And I know they're signing up children. I think I got the email. They're signing up children between now and December first, with the exception of the days that the police department is closed. Am I correct? and between nine and three, but um, they are going to need toys to give out. So thank you. And thank you for your support of that program. All right, Commissioner First. We are not gonna have another commission meeting this month, so I wanna wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you first thing in December. Yeah. That's it. Commissioner Keller. Um, same as everybody else, I want to thank staff for a tremendous job. They did a really good job, everybody, on Founders Day this year. It was, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it, um, as always. Um, happy Thanksgiving to all those. Um, uh, since we will not have another meeting before the end of the, end of the uh, into December. And then also just one more reminder that uh, next week, November 14th, next Tuesday, um, they will be uh, closing Clark Road at, at AD Mims in order to do that uh, railroad crossing, and that'll be closed for a week. So please uh, figure your times and, uh, and school buses and all that are around, uh, around that, that week of closing there. So that's all, Bayer. Thank you. All right. A couple things. Um, Chief? Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah, Chief. Where's the other chief? I, don't, I didn't recognize him, said they're Chief Brown. <laughs> chief, Chief. The, uh, I was talking to uh, Lieutenant Nyland there, I think it was earlier, and the, the problem we got here now with this road closure, we've got the problem with the children coming off uh, on the other south side, or I mean the west side of Kissimmee. So we need to have somebody there now until we get that road open okay we'll cross them kids cross that street I, I saw them meeting today with a whole traffic unit um when did you speak with them i i, I spoke to him tonight because, oh tonight okay but i don't plan nobody to address that yep we'll get on it because they're coming across from uh, bay street and ohio street walking across Kissimmee. now everybody's going to Kissimmee, going down the road okay. and I, I i hate to say it but Citizens, like it or not, we need to be down there with officers all periodically during the day because yeah. they are speeding. Yep. I think everybody's upset because they're having to make turns and change, but there's dangers for people and they're flying through these neighborhoods. Okay. So I, I've addressed it with the public works director about the um, 
Teacher. area up here on Blueford where they stopped it at uh, White Road, and they'll have to, I think they need to move it back to Columbus because they're coming past that, then they go on past the sign. Right. Because they need to turn on Columbus to go to McGuire to get to Silver Star. And they're all going like ants. They're going in circles over there. Are they going through the sign that yeah. says local traffic only? Oh, yeah. Only? Yeah, they're you going can't around. go anywhere once you get down. Well, they get entered. They, yeah, they do. They come <laughs> through the neighborhood. I was going to say, your street, I yeah. noticed there was a lot of traffic oh, going yeah. through your street today. Yeah. It, 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 I yeah. watch for people, but I'm telling you, they're, they're flying through there. They they're all cutting back and forth and circling down at the dead end. They all go flying to the dead end and get to the dead end. Then they all realize, oh, it's a dead end. They don't read <laughs> yeah. the sign that says no outlet. Right. <laughs> so yep. the we major are. thing is the children coming right. off the south side from Bay and Ohio Street, it's got to go across that street and then come up there and get across. Now, one of the parents said the road was messed up on the sidewalk there, so we need to look at that. Okay. I know that's not your job, that's Steve's, no, and they're supposed well, to be Well, we'll get that. with them. If, they, if there's an issue with the sidewalks and the children coming mm -hmm. back and forth, we do, we'll get with Steve and the public works, and right. we'll, we'll figure something out. All right. Okay. Thanks, Chief. One other, is Steve Krug still here? I'm not trying to draw the meat now, but I, I need to get these. But you do have a problem on your street. Who? Because they're cutting through, and that's what, you know, that's, it's you a short a street. Is that it's a maze house. Right <laughs> no, it's just, it, it's, it is a. I got a sign, I'm going to sit out there in the chair, not like the other Mary's do. I'm just going to say, <laughs> slow down. We could get you that sign. <laughs> uh, Steve, I, I brought this up three, four months ago, and I talked to uh, the city manager about it, and I know, I talked to Rob. We discussed, and, the, and, and it was a consensus up here, and it's Com Commissioner Keller's different about those lights on Ingram Road, not the one at the end, but Correct. lights on Ingram Road. Correct. I've, I have nothing yet back from Duke Energy, and I thought we had put a plug number into the budget, but I haven't been able to verify with finance that there is a number in there. So we have to get a rough number on what it's going to cost and see if we can find some savings and some projects to fund it before the end of the year end of the fiscal year because we need to, that that one citizen i don't know if he can contact I joel think, yeah. but he contacts me every other day but I, I don't blame him you know he's trying to get an answer so we need to get some kind of answer steve you said it's not in the budget not that we can find what, what are we talking ballpark um i'm figuring at least 20. If the um, commission wants to do a consensus, we can see what we could do to find those funds elsewhere and, and go ahead with that project. How much is in contingency? Uh, Before it's, it's, <laughs> you probably have enough in contingency, <laughs> but uh, he, he, said other, he said other places. He said other places. Yeah. <laughs> said other Including places. contingency. Let's go other places uh, first. Let's do other places okay. first. I have, no, I have no problem with that. We've got right. to find the money. That's uh, yeah. It's unfortunate, but you know things do happen. But. And I. All right, so we, we're all consensus of that? Yeah. All right. Okay. The other, the other thing is, I, I just want to say that I don't know, the citizens, I had some tell me this weekend they appreciated the yard cleanup, which was a lot more than what some of the emails we got back during the thing. But believe me, folks, it was a hard, that was a hard storm to come through the city of Okoy, and, and, the, and the staff in the city has worked continuously participating with cleaning it up, and I appreciate staff's efforts and time. And I will say that rain or shine, the company we hired did a, they did shine. So they, they did a great job. And Steve, I want to thank the staff and your, your employees for all their time and effort to get that. And if there's anybody that has any still left there, feel free to give us a call and let us know. I know some people are putting stuff out again, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we'll take care of that. But we need to let everybody know we appreciate the efforts and the time to do that. Can I say something at yes. this point? I think it's important. You know, there's a reason we live in the municipality of the city of Ocoee, because today I got an email from the county because we're discussing resurfacing the county section of White Road. And they can't start that until they get into Magnolia Springs to clean up the debris that hasn't been picked up yet. Yeah. So when you look at what you're getting from the city of Ocoee and then you look right on the outside across from Rose Hill, they can't start, the, they can't start doing any resurfacing until they finish cleaning up. And so, you know, if, if you want to know why it's important and why we love to live in a city, in the city of Ocoee, this is exactly the reason. Yeah. But like I said, again, I, I know the company we hired, did it, they get paid to do it, but our employees get paid also. But they did that well above while they were doing our regular, everyday uh, collection. So we appreciate it very much. No more comments? No more things? 
Meet adjourned. Good.